Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to learn about the monitoring tab. We are going to look at the very four important functions which are machines, processes, queues and SLAs. Apart from that, I am also going to go through this permissions. There is something called UiPath monitoring permissions. How you do it and what are this view, view on machines, view monitoring on view on queues, what are all this? I'm going to talk about in detail. So let's get started. All right. So the very first thing we will do, we will understand the monitoring tab. So first of all, the very first option is overview. So in this overview window, you see the job statuses. So you do remember, right? The very first time when you start a job, it will go to pending. It will find a machine, then it will get into running state, right? And then it will become successful. So in between, you could have, you could have been, uh, you have the option to stop it. You have the option to terminate, right? Suspend, resume. So all these options are here. So let's do one thing. First of all, let's have a small demo. I'll go to one of my folder, click on automations. And here, let me run a simple process. It will simply say good morning through a message box. I'm going to start the job. Now, as soon as you start a job, if you see it, it from pending state, it will get on to running state. If you refresh it, see now it is saying running. The same thing, let's imagine in your company, there are multiple processes currently running, multiple jobs which are currently running. So there you would be able to see, okay, um, there are running jobs five or 10, pending jobs, let's say three, so some kind of a monitoring window, overall monitoring window, you would get it here through this monitoring tab. In this folder, you know what is happening. The same thing if I go to the tenant label, there's another monitoring tab. So it will show you for all the folders, everything, wherever it is running, overall it is going to show you over here. So let me look at the folder level at the moment. And here it, you can see one, it's saying running. The moment I'll click on OK, look at the count. So here the successful job count is one to one. The moment I click on OK, the process will end and you can see the running state has become zero. And now the count has increased to one to two. If it is faulted, the count would show here, right? If you have stopped it, the count would show here. So it is a pretty simple overview window of what is happening in your orchestrator. So this is where you could look at. And then the second important tab is a machine tab. So these are the four important components, machine, processes, queues, and SLS. If I'm asking a question under monitoring tab, which are the four components or which are the components available? And I'll give you some five, 10 options wherein you have to select the exact four. They are machines. You can monitor machines. You can monitor the processes. You can monitor the queue and you can monitor the queue SLA. All right. This should be your answer. Now machines. In the machines tab, it would show you in your organization how many different machines are in connected state or available state, how many are unresponsive, how many have unlicensed. So here I actually have one machine, but I have given two licenses to it. One is the production unattended license and the other license I have given is testing license because of which you can see it's showing two. However, you can have an option to group by machine. So it is only showing one machine and this machine has got two different licenses, production and testing. So that's more or the less around the different machines. And these machines, you know, it connects with your orchestrator. These machines are there, which are connected. And there you see something called last heartbeat sent one minute back. So as per the design uh, in one of the documentation, which I read, it generally every 30 seconds, it will try. If that fails again for the next 30 seconds, it will try. It will continuously try to send notifications to the, so you can see it has become 23 seconds now. So I think it is happening every one minute. Okay. So this is how the hard bit is sent. Now let's look at the processes tab. Pretty simple ones, very not very uh, clumsy. So here you have the option to select one hour, last one hour, what happened, last one day, how many processes ran. Uh, how many uh, in last one week, how many processes ran. So you can see all the details are coming in last one month, how many processes I have run. So you can see the green boxes means you have executed. 
gray means not executed red means executed with errors suspended so things like that you can overall do a monitoring that is the main purpose if you scroll down below running jobs time frame right so last one week uh, 78 uh, uh, i think 78 uh, minutes probably the total time frame yeah total time frame ran so you can just highlight this running jobs in the selected interval broken down into specific time frames so you get certain important details here successful how many successful faulted that is there in the overview tab also but very specific to processes if you like to see you come here and see so one of the important uh, thing is average uh, duration right right now i ran a process so for this process the average duration is 28 seconds pending before it allocates to a robot it took one second so all this important information you would be able to find here so if you see this dispatcher process average duration it took one minute okay average duration for the process is one minute 15 successful so all this data points you find it in the process system clear let's move on to our next tab which is q tab so let's say have you have got some 10 20 queues running in your production environment all of those things you would it would appear here so right now i have got only one queue for this folder now if you go to the tenant layer monitoring and go to queues right so currently there's only one queue one at the moment same thing if you go to the folder monitoring queues it will show you so that shows the overall it this shows the specific folder for the specific folder now here there is a queue called q1 okay processing with no issues transaction overview so any kind of problem with the queue it would appear here processing fail with app exception queue items overdue so all these things information you can quickly find from this tab so transactions so how many transactions in each you know in in your queue so 690 transaction got processed newly added item 700 like that you know those in, you know important information you find you also find in this queue per tran transaction it taking one second per transaction it takes one second so this information you find it here okay so now let's move on to our next tab which is sla tab now this sla tab i have actually in detail i have spoken how do you enable sla for a queue how do you monitor this so i have a specific video on this in case you want to learn in detail you should watch that video wherein i have shown in sla at risk out sla how all these things comes in the same playlist you have a video on sla so you look that so here you can see it shows the q1 ast is one second so these are the four important tabs now the second important area is this called ui path monitoring permissions <clears throat> so what is this monitoring permission one need to understand so let's start very slowly and understand everything in detail so here it says so the first line is for the classic folder so right now nus classic folders are not available so we would go from the third from this point okay these three points will cover one by one so what is this this point says view on monitoring view on machines if a user has view access for the monitoring and view access for the machine it will allow him to see the content of monitoring machines page. So in the orchestrator, if you go to monitoring and machines, if a user complains, hey, I'm not able to see anything under machines, it is blank. It says I don't have permission. So he is complaining because that user doesn't have this basic permissions where view access should be given to monitoring, view access should be given to machine. Now let's see where exactly these are available. If a user wants to monitor a developer whom you want to give permission for some, some time, how will you do it? So let's go to orchestrator. Okay, we are starting from here. Let's go to orchestrator and go to tenant. Go to manage access. Okay, now imagine this is the user, Rakesh Behra. He is the user. Now here, if you click on these three dots and click on edit, what happens? It shows you this user had got all these different roles he has a role of administrator he has a role of allow to be automation user generally you don't put all of this you provide a specific role to someone right you don't provide all these roles to one person you provide so for you know because it's my own account i have given everything there but generally you provide an admin or a allow to be automation developer some permission you provide now let's say you have provided a permission 
let's say administrator permission you have given him or automation developer permission you have given him now he should be able to monitor the machines you want him to monitor the machines now for that how will he do it okay let's go again monitoring uh, tenant manage access now first thing what you do go to roles in the roles let's say you have given a role called administrator role to this guy machine means uh, machine level access requires administrator so if you go to this role you click on this three dots and click on view okay now this role if you see the in this role you gain access to all the tenant components like your machines right when i say tenant components remember in the tenant layer you are you have having all these components robot folder monitoring manage access machines package web hooks right credential these are the tenants and these are the components of tenant layer if you hit on a folder these are the components of your folder layer now what i am doing i'll go to tenant manage access roles and that user what role he has got i would check that imagine he has got administrator access i'll go here and i have to ensure he should at least have view access to the machines so machine is a component it is a tenant component so he should be at least having access to the view access so here if you see the administrator has view create edit delete all the access he has got so at least the view access should be there this is what it is saying view on machines that role for that user should have view on machines this should be understood excellent what is the second thing it is talking about he should also have view on monitoring and where do you find that here if you see in the tenant monitoring is not a component monitoring is a folder component so here if you see folder level component so you go to folder permissions and here if you see there is a monitoring so here also he should at least have view access you can give view create delete all the permissions you can provide but at least that role should contain view access getting it so view on monitoring if you he has access and view on machines he has access then he should be able to see the content on the monitoring machine tab understood now if you have understood this these are all very easy view on monitoring and view on queues for example so this machine is the only component which is a tenant component okay monitoring queues all these are your folder components so if i go here let's say rakesh has got this guy rakesh he has got what are the uh, roles he has got you can check it here he has got a role called automation allowed to be automation developer role now this developer role does it contain the permission to view the <coughs> queues what was that uh, view the queues so he should at least have view permission on monitoring view permission on queue so how will you do first you check what are the, what is the role he has then you comes to the role tab in the role tabs check for that particular role name automation developer click on the three dots click on uh, view and here in the view you check uh tenant permissions so here er, er, er. okay it has only got tenant permissions alerts libraries machines he has got permission so in the machine uh, okay and then folder okay not this one let's check what is the other permission that user has got so he has got permissions like allow to be automation publisher allow to be automation developer allow to be automation user allow to be folder administrator this is another role he has got so let's check in that role allow to be folder administrator okay now in this role let's view so what are the things should be enabled for him allow to be folder administrator uh, web hooks okay so where is the uh, folder administrator okay let's check this okay so folder administrator so that user i should at least give certain role you can create your own customized role and only thing you have to check is in that role if that permission is been added or not so you go to the view for example in this uh, these are all folder level components are there so he should have access to monitoring minimum view you can give more accesses but minimum he should have view access 
and the second thing you should have access to the view access to the queue so these two things are important okay so this is the second point now let's cover the third point view on monitoring and view on jobs so what is what does that mean once again view on monitoring so monitoring you saw and there is another folder component should be jobs so if yeah jobs so jobs also minimum view permission should be having so if you if your person has so it is pretty simple let's say a person is complaining i don't have access to the machines that means in the roles that he that user has got he should have view on monitoring view on machines a person is complaining i'm not able to monitor the queues that means he the roles that he has got for his name he should have minimum view monitoring access and view on queue component and view on monitoring for the jobs view on monitoring and view on jobs so monitoring is a constant component one should have at least view access and this is only to view okay allow you to see the content you can't do any kind of modifications now modification let's say i want to do certain modification changes to the layout and few things like that so here are the edit so you should have anywhere if a question is asked a customer wants to allow or disable errors from the error feed in queues uh, what kind of permission should be given so you say minimum edit monitoring so anywhere the editing kind of things questions are coming then you should always look for edit the permission should be edit so that means here in the monitoring this second tab should be selected edit for the monitoring component okay so that means he can edit any kind of changes if only view is selected that means he can only view he can't do any changes modifications so based on the question you can easily determine that so edit on monitoring and view on robot this is for the classic folder let's ignore that let's start from these points so edit on monitoring view on queue allows you to disable errors from the error feed widgets on monitoring queues page okay so only having view access to the queue but edit in monitoring it will allow you allow you to make changes in the monitoring tab okay doesn't need to have edit in monitoring edit in queues only edit and view is enough the minimum requirement okay now second thing if you would like to make certain changes in the monitoring jobs page okay what is the change allow you to disable errors from the error feed widget of monitoring jobs page if this is the requirement then what should be minimum permission the minimum permission is edit on monitoring okay and view on jobs so remember edit any anything you would like to edit in monitoring tab simply remember edit in monitoring edit on monitoring and here the view is enough just to view you should have view on monitoring view and here only the view access getting it so that's about it and here there are a couple of other options i feel they are not very important so it's a combination of monitoring and uh, this one this is on environments this is on folders allow you to filter content so yeah so you can go through this documentation but i have highlighted the important points for you to understand if if a uh, you know if a user complains say i am not having access to make changes in the monitoring queue that means you should have at least the edit permission given to him for the monitoring component he should have at least edit permission and for the queue at least he should have view permission so that is the answer so all right guys thank you so much for watching and hearing me till the end uh, anybody who has uh, you know listened to me till the end please do comment i would like to know people who have got patience to listen to the entire lecture please do comment Thank you guys for watching. Let's meet once again in our next content.